the captured voice the cat the captured the captured voice The captured voice. To speak is to do something, something other than to express what one thinks. To speak is to do something, something other than to express what one thinks. The auditor is a labor of exploitation. I I'm a lover of learning and trees and open country Don't teach me anything there Whereas men in town do. I'm a lover of learning, and trees in the open country don't teach me anything, whereas men in town do. Tribeless, lawless, hearthless. Tribeless, lawless, hearthless. Like dolphins, for a mere instant, human language lifts its head from the semiotic sea of nature, 
But a human is nothing other than this very passage from pure language to discourse. And this transition, this instant, like dolphins for a mere instant, human language lifts its head from the semiotic sea of nature. But a human is nothing other than this very passage from pure language to discourse. And this transition, this instant, this instant <coughs> is history. Among living beings, only man has language. The voice is a sign of pain and pleasure. And this is why it belongs to the living beings. Since their nature has developed to the point of having the sense, of having the sensation of pain and pleasure and of signifying the two. But language is for manifesting the fitting and the unfitting, and the just and the unjust. To have the sensation of the good and the bad, and of the just and the unjust, is what is proper to man and opposed to other living beings. And the community of these things makes dwelling in the city. Among living beings, only man has language. The voice is a sign of pain and pleasure. And this is where it belongs to other living beings, since their nature has developed to the point of having the sensations of pain and pleasure and of signifying the two. But language is for manifesting the fitting and the unfitting, the just and the unjust, to have the sensation of the good and the bad, and of the just and the unjust, is what is proper to man and opposed to other living beings. And the community of these things makes dwelling and the city. What looks upon us from the monuments and the rubble of the past? What looks upon us from the monuments and the rubble of the past? After the birth of animals, plants exist for their sake, and that the other animals exist for the sake of man. The term for use and food, the wild, if not all, at least, the greater part of them for food and for the provision of clothing and various instruments. And for the provision of clothing and various instruments. Now, if nature makes nothing incomplete, and nothing in vain, the inference must be that she must, she has made all animals for the sake of man. And so, from one point of view, the art of war is a natural art of acquisition. The art of war is a natural art of acquisition. For the art of acquisition includes hunting, an art which we ought to practice against wild beasts and against men, though intended by nature to be governed, will not submit. 
for war of such a kind is naturally just. The art of war is a natural art of acquisition, for the art of acquisition includes hunting, an art which we ought to practice against wild beasts and against men who, though intended by nature to be governed, will not submit, for war of such a kind is naturally just. The man who whitewashes has epochs to move, even in his most insignificant movement. Having is nothing but the appropriation of a being. This storm irresistibly propels him to the future to which his back is turned, while the pile of debris before him grows skyward. This storm irresistibly propels him to the future, to which his back is turned, while the pile of debris before him grows skyward. The ideas are the stars in contrast to the sun of revelation. They do not shine their light into the day of history, but work within it invisibly. The ideas are the stars in contrast to the sun of revelation. They do not shine their light into the day of history, but work within it invisibly. They shine their light only into the night of nature. Works of art are thus defined as models of a nature that does not await a day and thus does not await judgment day either. They are defined as models of a nature that is neither the staging ground of history nor human domicile. Works of art are thus defined as models of a nature that does not await the day, that does, does not await judgment day either. They are defined as models of a nature that is neither the staging ground of history nor human domicile. The time of art has stopped, but on the hour that contains in itself all the other hours on the dial and consigns all of them to the lasting 
of an infinitely recurring instant. The time of art has stopped, but on the hour that contains in itself all the other hours on the dial, and contains and consigns all of them to the lasting of an infinitely recurring instant. The lasting the lasting of an infinitely recur ring instant. Its twilight can last more than the totality of its day, because its death is precisely its, inability, its inability to die, its inability to measure itself. Its twilight can last more than the totality of its day, because its death is precisely its inability to die. Because its death is precisely its inability to die, its inability to measure itself. Everything forgotten mingles with what has been forgotten of the prehistoric world forms countless, uncertain, changing compounds, yielding a constant flow of new, strange products. Landscape, ulterior stage, immemorially lost these things. We see them as perfectly, as clearly as ever, and yet we already do not see them. Lost happily, immemorially lost. In the landscape, ulterior stage, Immemorial lost these things. We see them as perfectly and clearly as ever, and yet we 